That's even though the report took DFO to task for failing to recognize mismanagement as one of the reasons for the stock collapse. That report also questioned why a recovery plan hasn't been drawn up describing DFO's lack of long-term vision as astonishing. The federal conservative government called an inquiry in 2009 into the decline of sockeye salmon on British Columbia's Fraser River. How can the federal government investigate management policies on one end of the country and not the other when they have so clearly failed everywhere? Newfoundland and Labrador's commercial salmon fishery was shut down in 1991. 20 years ago this week, there has been no recovery. Do you see a trend? Because there is a trend. An inquiry would also investigate the state of fishery science. Science has and is being gutted. Instead of rebuilding, rebuilding for the future, we're taking away our opportunity for a future. An inquiry would also investigate fisheries enforcement and quotas. Who holds the rights to the fish in the sea and who exactly is fishing the quotas? Who's benefiting from the quotas? An inquiry would investigate the effectiveness of the Northwest Atlantic Fisheries Organization in managing migratory stocks outside the 200 mile, mile limit. Has it been effective? Absolutely not. At NAFO's recent general meeting in Halifax, the quotas for most ground fish stocks were cut across the board. Across the board. All stocks, all stocks are in trouble. The House of Commons Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans, a committee that I now stand on, I now sit on, tabled a report in this House last week on the snow crab resource. The study was triggered by concerns expressed after DFO cut the snow crab harvest in the southern Gulf of St. Lawrence by 63 percent. DFO was warned, it had been warned, to cut the quota, but the minister ignored the advice. Again, this is not about blame. I purposely avoided blame. That's not what this is about. Recommendation 3 of the Snow Crab Report advises that the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans strike a task force to review the snow crab assessment process and the management of the fishery. The management of the fishery. But the problem isn't with the manage, is, ma isn't just with the management of the snow crab resource, it's with the management of all fish, all fish, all the fish that swim off Newfoundland and Labrador shores. Today, at home, in my province, palmed size fish are being exported to places like China and the U.S. for processing as our plants close permanently, what plants we have left, as our aging, aging plant workers protest in the streets. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel. We're scraping the bottom of the sea. We must rebuild. Experts have said that a, a healthy ground fish stock could provide an annual harvest of 400,000 tons. 400,000 tons. The total ground fish har harvest last year, the total ground fish harvest for all of Newfoundland and Labrador amounted to less than 20,000 tons. We could have a healthy, a healthy harvest of 400,000 tons. Last year it was less than 20,000 tons, a shadow, a skeleton of our once great fisheries, of the once great Grand Banks of Newfoundland. The time to rebuild is now. The Prime Minister once described the East Coast as having a culture of defeat, a culture of defeat. That's not the case. I stand before you to say that is not the case. Far from it. In Newfoundland and Labrador, we're fighting for our culture. We're, we're fighting for our rural way of life to make, sure, to make sure that we can do for ourselves so we don't revert 
to our old label, and I'm sure everybody in this house has heard it, a label that was absolutely incorrect, that Newfoundland and Labrador is a drain on Canada, that Newfoundland and Labrador is a drain on the Canadian Confederation. That is not the case. If the fisheries had been a bank, if the grand banks of Newfoundland had actually been a bank that was mismanaged to bankruptcy, there would be demands. There would be demands for accountability, demands for reform. There would be demands for, over, for an overhaul, demands to ensure that it never happens again. The grand banks of Newfoundland and Labrador, my home province, deserves no less. I urge all honourable, honourable members to support my private members' bill. It's not, just the, it's not just the stocks, it's not just the stocks that need rebuilding, but our faith, our faith in this country to help, to help individual provinces stand on our own. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Fisheries. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank my uh, thank my colleague for his uh, for his eloquent presentation. Uh, we will have opportunity to uh, disagree with him on many of the uh, points that he made in just a few minutes. But uh, I think what he didn't uh, flesh out well enough for us uh, are the the number of reviews that have already taken place since uh, 1992 into the, the collapse of the COD. He referred to one only. I was actually part of that study. But there were many others, at least a dozen, some uh, from the province, uh, some from the federal government, some from the Fisheries Resource uh, Conservation Council, another one from the, from the Auditor General's office. There's been a whole long list of those, so it begs the question, uh, what he thinks would, uh, you know, spending multiple millions of dollars would do that these other studies uh, didn't do? And the follow-up question would be, um, why the province of Newfoundland isn't supporting his, uh, his call for a commission of inquiry into that. Well, member for St. John South, Mount Pearl. I thank the honourable member for the question. I'll be interested to hear uh, what points exactly in my speech that the honourable member, member disagreed with. I'd be very interested, interested to hear that. Um, as for why uh, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, the progressive conservative government of Newfoundland and Labrador, um, hasn't come out on side with a call for an inquiry, I suggest my honorable conservative member across the way uh, call up the Minister of Fisheries and ask. Um, I think that the government's, government has to make a decision whether or not there's an inquiry, and the decision has to come from not just the federal conservative government, but the provincial government of, of my home province. Because the management of the fishery, the federal conservative government, the federal government of Canada looks after harvesting, the provincial government looks after processing. The federal government looks after fishing boats, my home province looks after uh, uh, fishing plants. And the bottom line is the management from both the federal and provincial government levels has not worked. And maybe it's the fact that both levels of government don't want to admit that the management hasn't worked. Questions and comments, uh, the Honourable Member for Southwell Eastern Shore. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, my Honourable Colleague, uh, the Parliamentary Secretary of the Fisheries, indicated why we should spend millions of dollars in inquiry. I guess the question to him would be, in his province, they're spending millions of dollars in inquiry on a salmon run that failed miserably. But my Honourable Colleague from Newfoundland, Madam Speaker, is absolutely correct. I have been asking, when I was a fisheries critic, for the NDP for over 13 years for a national federal inquiry into the practices and policies of the Department of Fisheries and Oceans starting in 1989 to 2000, sorry, 98 to 2000 when the Hutchins-Myers report, which my honorable parliamentary secretary should know, indicated, these two scientists indicated that there was science manipulation at the very highest levels within DFO when it came to the collapse of the cod stocks. The government of the day, Madam Speaker, was warned that the cod stocks were in trouble and they were ignored. That is just one 
tiny element of why we need to get to the bottom of the serious mismanagement of the fisheries and oceans in this country. And I'd like my honourable colleague just to comment on that, please. Thank you. Honourable member for St. John South Mount Pearl. I thank my honourable colleague for the question. The question has been asked of how many reports have been written in the past looking into the Newfoundland and Labrador fisheries? And how many have been, that's a very good question. How many reports into the fishery have been ignored? Untold numbers. The, right now there's an inquiry that's ongoing into the dis disappearance of salmon stocks on BC's Fraser River. The last I heard is that that inquiry has a price tag of roughly $25 million. But the point I have to make on this, we haven't had a ground fish fishery since 1992, going back 19 years. We have experts who say if we had a healthy resource, we could have an annual sustainable harvest, an annual harvest of 400,000 tons a year, going back 19 years, going every year into the future. How many how, how much, how many untold hundreds of millions of dollars would that be worth? In terms of the question about an inquiry, why do we need another one? We need an inquiry specifically into why the management of this fishery has failed. Why has it failed? I challenge the member opposite to come out and show me the report that shows the way forward, that shows all the problems with the management of fisheries in the past. That report does not exist. The only way to come forward with that report is have an inquiry into the Newfoundland and Labrador. Order, please. Resuming debate.